In 1940, war was raging across Europe and the skies had become a proving ground for engineering supremacy. In the United States, a new engine roared to life, a sleek, liquid-cooled V12 designed not in Britain or Germany, but by Allison, the V1710. It was America's answer to the Rolls-Royce Merlin. It promised power, speed, and altitude dominance. Instead, it delivered controversy, compromise, and confusion. Loved by some, loathed by others, it powered legendary fighters and nearly doomed them too. This was the story of the Allison V1710, how it rose with ambition, stumbled with consequence, and ultimately vanished beneath the roar of jet engines. Born for war, the V1710's origins and early ambitions. Let's rewind to the late 1930s. Europe teetered on the brink of all-out war, and the US military was waking up to the fact that its air fleet was hopelessly outdated. American engineers needed to create a modern, liquid-cooled engine that could rival anything coming out of Britain or Germany. Enter the Allison division of General Motors. Their answer, the V1710, a 12-cylinder, 60-degree V engine that promised over 1,000 horsepower in a sleek, streamlined package. This wasn't just another piston engine, it was supposed to be a revolution. Unlike bulky radial engines that created drag and limited pilot visibility, the V1710's inline design offered aerodynamic advantages, better pilot sight lines, and the potential for superlative high-speed performance. The military took notice, and fast. By 1939, the V1710 was earmarked for America's new generation of fighters, the P-38 Lightning, P-39 Aero Cobra, P-40 Warhawk, and eventually the P-51 Mustang. It was expected to dominate the skies, but expectations, as we'll soon see, can be a dangerous thing. What nobody wanted to talk about at the time was that the V1710 was still very much a work in progress. Its early models had serious altitude limitations, a complex cooling system, and an Achilles heel in its supercharging setup. But with war on the horizon, there was no time for perfection. Allison's engine was rushed from drawing board to production line, and that urgency? It would haunt the V1710 every time its propeller spun into life. The inline gamble, engineering a liquid-cooled power plant. The V1710 was bold by American standards. At a time when most US aircraft still relied on air-cooled radial engines, Allison bet everything on a liquid-cooled design, a risk that mirrored what Germany had done with the Daimler-Benz DB601. The idea was simple, more streamlined fighters with higher speeds and better visibility. But the execution, that's where things got complicated. Let's break it down. The V1710 used a glycol-based liquid cooling system to regulate its internal temperatures, requiring radiators, coolant pumps, and a more delicate integration with aircraft fuselage designs. Unlike radials that could take bullets and keep running, the V1710 was vulnerable. A single hit to the cooling line could cause the engine to overheat in minutes. Still, the engine was mechanically elegant. Its forged steel crankshaft, aluminum alloy heads, and 5.5-inch bore produced impressive torque at lower altitudes. At sea level, it was smooth, reliable, and deceptively powerful. Mechanics praised its accessibility and modular design. On paper, it was a winner. But there was one major catch. The engine lacked a proper two-stage, two-speed supercharger. While European engines like the Merlin were built for high-altitude combat, the V1710 was optimized for medium-altitude performance. That meant it struggled above 12,000 feet especially when trying to chase German bombers or engage enemy fighters that had the altitude advantage. This design choice wasn't an oversight, it was a deliberate trade-off. Allison engineers prioritized simplicity, durability, and production scalability. But in the chaos of war, that trade-off would prove costly. 
turbocharged promises and supercharged problems. Here's where the story begins to twist. The V1710 wasn't always supposed to struggle at altitude. In fact, the original plan included a turbocharger system that would give it teeth in high-altitude combat. The Lockheed P-38 Lightning, the first fighter to use the engine, was designed with that turbocharging system in mind, and when it worked, it worked brilliantly. The early P-38s, equipped with twin V-1710s and General Electric turbochargers, were speed demons at high altitudes. But turbocharging came with its own nightmare, complexity. The ducting, intercoolers and control systems required for proper operation added weight, fragility and maintenance challenges. In the European theatre, field crews unfamiliar with the system often struggled to keep them airworthy. In aircraft like the P-40 and P-39, turbochargers weren't even included. Instead, Allison relied on a single-stage, single-speed supercharger bolted directly onto the engine. It was cheaper, lighter and easier to maintain, but it turned those fighters into sitting ducks above 15,000 feet. This wasn't just a limitation, it was a death sentence in the wrong mission profile. The problem wasn't that the V1710 couldn't be turbocharged, it's that production delays, manufacturing priorities and shifting military doctrine often stripped the turbo away, and that left the engine and the aircraft it powered crippled in dogfights where altitude meant survival. Allison and the US military had overpromised and underdelivered. In trying to make the engine do everything, they'd designed a machine that couldn't do one thing well, dominate the high skies. Underpowered legends, the P-39, P-40 and what went wrong. You know their names. The P-39 Aero Cobra and P-40 Warhawk, two of America's most iconic World War II fighters, and both powered by the same engine the Allison V-1710. These planes should have been game changers. Instead, they're remembered as fighters that fell short. Why? Let's start with the P-39. Radical in design, it featured a mid-engine layout with the propeller driven via a long shaft under the cockpit. But that wasn't the issue. The problem was altitude. The P-39 had no turbocharger. None. The military stripped it out during development to reduce weight and simplify maintenance. What remained was an aircraft that performed well below 15,000 feet but was helpless above it. Then came the P-40. Rugged, reliable and beloved by the flying tigers in China. At lower altitudes it could hold its own. But once the fight climbed into thinner air, German and Japanese fighters tore through it with ease. Again. The culprit was the engine. The V-1710 simply couldn't breathe at altitude without advanced supercharging. The real tragedy? These weren't bad aircraft. They had good handling, strong armament and solid construction, but their potential was choked, literally, by an engine that couldn't deliver the altitude performance needed for modern air combat. Pilots paid the price. Many who flew these aircraft in Europe and the Pacific described being outrun and outclimbed in dogfights they never had a chance to win. And history remembers these planes as plucky underdogs, not because of their design, but because their hearts, their engines were never given a fair chance. Allies and alternatives. Why Britain chose the Merlin instead? Here's the real gut punch. At the same time the US was doubling down on the V-1710, Britain was perfecting a rival, the Rolls-Royce Merlin. It was also a V-12 liquid-cooled inline engine, but with one critical difference. It had a two-stage, two-speed supercharger. This meant the Merlin could maintain high horsepower at 25,000 feet and beyond, allowing Spitfires, Hurricanes and later the P-51 Mustang to dance at the edge of the stratosphere. Meanwhile, the Allison V-1710 was wheezing at 15,000 feet, outclassed in the very domain where dogfights were being won or lost. When North American aviation began developing the P-51, it was originally fitted with the V-1710. 
test flights showed decent speed but disappointing high-altitude performance. It was a fast, beautiful airframe crippled by the same altitude ceiling. Then something extraordinary happened. The British took a risk. They swapped the V-1710 for the Merlin. The result? A transformation so complete it turned the P-51 Mustang into one of the greatest fighters in history. Suddenly, the same plane that once gasped for air at 20,000 feet was now escorting bombers deep into Germany. It was the moment Allison's V-1710 was decisively outshined. Why didn't the US develop a similar supercharger system for the V-1710 sooner? Bureaucracy, cost and wartime urgency played their roles, but the result was clear. America's best airframes were being let down by engines that couldn't keep up with their European counterparts. It wasn't just about horsepower, it was about altitude. And in that race, the V-1710 never stood a chance. Evolution or obsolescence, late war modifications and missed potential. By the mid-1940s, Allison engineers were scrambling to patch the V-1710's altitude issues. New variants like the V-1710-93 and Dash-127 introduced water injection systems, higher compression ratios, and improved gear-driven superchargers. On paper, these upgrades looked promising. They pushed the engine's output to nearly 1,500 horsepower and slightly improved performance above 20,000 feet. But the war wasn't waiting. Every month, the Merlin-powered P-51s were racking up victories, escorting bombers into Berlin and cementing their place in aviation legend. Meanwhile, the upgraded Allisons were often relegated to second-line duty, training squadrons, recon variants or export models. There were moments where the V-1710 nearly redeemed itself. The P-63 King Cobra, a follow-up to the P-39, used a highly refined V-1710 and performed impressively in Soviet hands. But by then, the tide had already turned. Jet propulsion was on the horizon and piston engine development, especially for underdog platforms, was losing priority. Allison had the talent. The engine had the bones. What it lacked was time, investment and strategic support. As the war ended, so did the V-1710's chances at redemption. It didn't fade with a bang, but a whimper quietly phased out while engineers turned their eyes to turbines. The Allison name would later rise again in the jet age, but the V-1710's chapter closed quietly, overshadowed by the very planes it once powered. What could have been a world-class engine instead became a cautionary tale in missed opportunities and wartime compromises. Why the V-1710 was forgotten by history Walk through any major aviation museum and you'll see the Merlin on proud display, its polished cylinder banks basking in the glory of a war it helped win. The V-1710? If it's even there, it's often tucked in a corner, barely acknowledged. How did an engine that powered so many American fighters slip into historical obscurity? The answer lay in the narrative. The V-1710 didn't power the victors of dogfights over London or Berlin. It didn't save bomber crews over the Ruhr or change the course of the war. It powered transitional aircraft, designs that were bold, flawed or both. Planes like the P-39 and P-40 were appreciated more in hindsight than celebrated in their time, and the engine that drove them shared that quiet fate. The Merlin had a hero's arc. The V-1710 had a working-class story, one of struggle, compromise and underdog performance. It wasn't flashy, and it didn't deliver on the wartime myth of overwhelming power. Even in aircraft where it succeeded, its victories were drowned out by louder machines and louder legends. There was also a political undertone. The Merlin was adopted, improved, and produced under license by Packard. It became a symbol of Anglo-American cooperation, the V-1710. It remained a domestic effort and a reminder of early wartime stumbles. 
Allison's engine simply didn't fit the heroic mold that post-war America wanted to remember. It wasn't a legend, it was a lesson. And lessons, unfortunately, don't make for good museum headlines. Legacy in Silence – What the V-1710 Left Behind Though largely forgotten by the public, the V-1710 left behind a legacy that reached beyond combat records or kill ratios. Its impact was quieter, but no less important. It shaped American engine manufacturing and taught engineers hard truths about altitude performance, cooling systems, and design trade-offs. For mechanics, the V-1710 offered valuable lessons in modular engine maintenance. Crews learned to work with complex cooling systems, troubleshoot supercharger inconsistencies, and swap out components under pressure. Many of those wartime technicians later brought those skills into civilian aviation and the burgeoning jet industry. Technologically, the V-1710 served as a stepping stone. Its crankcase design, internal metallurgy, and fuel delivery systems informed later work in turbine engines, especially in the early years of Allison's Jet Propulsion Division. The engine may not have won the war, but it helped train the minds that would lead the next generation. And in a few dusty hangars, the V-1710 still lived. A handful of restored warbirds kept it flying, tended to by passionate volunteers who understood its significance. To hear it run today is to hear the heartbeat of a different kind of war machine, one built on hope, compromise and sheer mechanical grit. Its cylinders don't roar so much as whisper, reminding us that not every great machine gets to be a legend. Some just did the best they could with what they were given, in a world that demanded more than any one engine could provide. The Allison V1710 was not a failure, it was a fighter, born into a war that demanded perfection at impossible speed. It powered the underdogs, the forgotten heroes, the aircraft that bridged the gap between past and future. In its pistons lived ambition, and in its silence lives a lesson that even the most powerful machines can be held back by timing, politics, or the absence of trust. If you believe stories like these deserve to be remembered, hit like, subscribe, and join us next time as we uncover more of aviation's forgotten giants.